So we're talking about wisdom over the last three weeks and we're finishing out the series Between the Lines and maybe you realize as we've been going through it or this might be the first week you're watching it, but you go, there's some things in my life that I need to move away from and move towards to have wisdom in my life. And maybe there's some habits and some things that are holding you back in the way you relate to wisdom, the way you deal with others, the way you look at criticism in your life, that actually is stuff that's holding you from moving forward in God's wisdom. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna jump into some worship. So glad you're joining us today. Like, share, send to a friend who needs in their life. Welcome to church. There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history They made for sinners For every curse is blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began in the veil was torn what sacrifice was made as the heavens rose
Welcome everybody to our online campus from around the world, around the state of Arizona and Crossroads Recovery. Guys, we say it every week, man, we love you guys. We're so proud of you, so honored to be a part of your lives. Tell Pastor Todd I said a big hey today. Make sure he's behaving at all times. We're landing our series this week, a four-week series called Between the Lines. That God has designed a path for us to live on. And when we live outside of those lines, we jack our lives up. Here's a verse we've been digging into for the last four weeks. Titus chapter 2 and verse 12 it says this, we should live in this evil world with three things. Let's watch this. Wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. So our greatest act of devotion or our greatest act of worshiping God is simply this. I said this last week, choices. It's the choices that we make every day to go within the lines that God's drawn for, drawn for us or outside of those lines. And when we go inside the lines, that is wisdom. That is righteousness. And it's the greatest evidence of our devotion to God. So last week, I asked you to, be, to spend this entire week, the last week, asking this important question. What's the wise thing to do. And remember last week I talked to you about, hey, according to your past, what you've done in the past, what's the wise thing to do? Your present circumstances, what's the wise thing to do? And your future vision that God's given you, what's the wise thing to do? Now today to land this series, we're going to be mentored by a man named Solomon. Solomon wrote uh, several books in the Old Testament. Uh, he was the wisest man of all time. He didn't always apply his wisdom, but we won't get into all that today. But he was the wisest man of all time. He was God said, ask me anything that you want. He was a king of Israel. God said, ask me anything you want. King Solomon asked for wisdom. And God was so pleased with his request, he made him the wisest man of all time. Rulers came from all around the known world at that time to sit in Solomon's presence and listen to the incredible wisdom that he had. He wrote the book of Proverbs. And Proverbs is where we're going to land today. We're going to spend some time there today. Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs, Solomon says there's four kinds of people. There's the wise person which we all want to be, right? Let's go with that. And then there's three other types of people. And these three other types of people are who we become when we snub wisdom, when we run away from wisdom. And what we don't realize is that when we run away from wisdom, we run to something else. And what we run to, what we run to is all kinds of brokenness, problems, stress in our lives. There's a strong chance today. Now listen to this. There's a strong chance that some of you listening today might be offended. But I, some of the things we're going to say today can be a little bit offensive. So hang with me. The Bible says you have to love me and you have to forgive me. So let's just dance this out together. I'm in it with you. I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to you today. Here's some ground rules. If you're watching with other people today, there's no elbowing each other. All right? There's no eye rolling at one another. Young people, don't roll your eyes at each other. Parents, don't roll your eyes at your kids. All right? Just everybody... Pay attention to their own life. <laughs> Apply this to your own life today. And here we go. So three different kinds of people. And I want you to be honest with yourself today. When you run away from wisdom, you run to something else. And here's what we're going to talk about. These three people. So the first one. And again, right out of the gate, this is going to be a little bit offensive. Solomon calls this first person that runs away from wisdom, calls them the simple, a simple person. All right, you're going... Well, that's not really politically correct. That's a little intense, all right, Dan? Go with me for a second. Simple people aren't allergic to wisdom. They just don't know what they don't know because a simple person lacks something that an older person has. Here it is, the advantage of time and experience. Now, teens, teenagers watching today, I want to show you something really, really important. If you're watching with your parents today, here's the, here it is. How many of you parents watching with your kids today, how many of you thought you knew more than your parents when you were 15 years of age? Just raise your hands in your living rooms or wherever you are around the world, okay? Did you see that, young people? We all thought, I did. I thought I knew more than my parents when I was 15 years of age. Now, here's the other thing. How many of you realize now you didn't know? Well, I'm gonna raise my hand. I did not know more than my parents. I promise you. Matter of fact, there are so many things I rolled my eyes at my parents at when they said it to me. I'm like, oh, you're just old. You're just out of old fashioned. I wish I would have done what they said. I was just simple. I was just not old enough. I didn't have enough experience yet. So here's the deal. The simple person's response to wisdom is things like this. It's all good. That's what a simple person says. It's all good. Or slay or super slay or slay men or something like that. I don't know. It's all good is what we say. Here's the deal. How can you guarantee that nothing bad will happen? An older person, we see all the things that could go wrong. 
And you know why? Because we've been there, we've done that, and we've got the scars for the stupid things that we've done to prove it. Here, here's another one. So it's all good, here's another one. I got this, I got this. I used to say this to my kids all the time. Hey, be careful, watch out, don't do that. Be, don't go down that road, don't do that. They're like, dude, dad, I got this. The older person is concerned you're going to get it because you think you got it, right? Did you catch that? Here's my favorite response of all. Just chill, man, it's no big deal. Just chill, simple person's theme of their life. Just chill, like relax, what you all worked up about, what you worried about, it's no big deal. Here's the deal, you lack experience. You've never been addicted. Maybe you are now, you just, right now, it's kind of fun, it's cool. Uh, you haven't faced the rock bottom of addiction yet. Can I get an amen from Crossroads this morning? But that's coming. Uh, you've never been in debt to the point where you don't know how you're gonna buy diapers for your baby. It, you, just right now, it's just freedom, man. I'm just being free. I'm enjoying my life. I'm living it up. Freedom. That's what the credit card companies call it. Matter of fact, I actually have a Chase Unlimited Freedom Card. The problem is <laughs> that with that card is it comes with a 21% interest rate. It's why I don't use it. It's stuck in my desk somewhere at home for emergencies only. All right, but it's a, they call it the freedom card, unlimited freedom. Yeah, if you wanna make a minimum payment and take you 50 years to pay it off, you'll be free after 50 years of digging yourself out of debt. See, you've never faced the regret of not waiting till marriage to give your body to this one person that you wanna live with and love the rest of your life. You, you don't know what sexual damage is yet, damage to the point of confusion and shame just chill, Dad, just chill, Mom, it's, it's no big deal. And we're going, no, no, it, it is a big deal. See, young people, I'm gonna give you a gift right now, an absolute gift. Just listen and lean in with me for just a second. I'm gonna give you a gift. You can have, listen, the best of both worlds. You can be young. <laughs> you can be young, eat cake, and eat cake with whole milk, and still wear skinny jeans. Enjoy that, because in your 40s, it'll take two hours on an elliptical machine to burn off those calories. But listen, you can be young and wise at the same time. Listen to me, young adults. Please listen to me. You don't have to learn from your mistakes. You know why? You can learn from ours. You can listen to us. Listen to us who are older, who've experienced more. We can let you know because we've lived it. We've got the scars to prove it. You're gonna do something. Here's why, here's why. You're going to do something that few people in your generation will do. Let me be honest, few people in my generation did. You're gonna humbly seek the input of wiser, older people. You're gonna find mentors in your life. You're gonna to go to them. You're gonna run your decisions by them because your decisions, your choices, are your greatest act of worship. You're gonna run those decisions by God who knows all things and is all wise. You're gonna run those decisions by God's word through the Bible and you'll find out what the Bible says about those decisions. You're gonna run these decisions by your parents, by your coach, by a teacher. You're going to seek the counsel of older, wiser people. See, here's the irony of this. Most of your friends are getting their advice from other simple people, other unexperienced younger people. Can you imagine in the NBA, basketball, professional basketball, can you imagine a rookie in the NBA going to another rookie in the NBA and saying, hey, would you be my mentor, man? They're not gonna do that. Can you imagine a first year med student going to another first year med student saying, hey, I want you to mentor me. No, they're gonna go to a professor. They're gonna go to an older mentor, someone who's already been through that class or maybe gone through that class two or three times and they're gonna ask them to guide them, them to direct them. But yet our entire generation, your entire generation and my generation did the same thing. We keep going to each other, our peers for advice when we don't know more than the other person because we haven't lived long enough to experience those things yet. Now, Solomon, speaking of wisdom as a house to dwell in, says this in Proverbs 9 and verse four. He says this, come in with me. He's talking about wisdom. Wisdom's, wisdom is calling us. Wisdom's like, come in with me, she urges, the simple. Basically what Solomon is saying is wisdom is crying out and saying, hey, those of you who don't know what you don't know, who keep saying, it's all right, man, chill, it's no big deal. Those of you saying that, come to me. Let me mentor you. So that's the simple. It's intense. Let's go on. It's gonna get more intense. The next person that Solomon talks about that when we run away from wisdom, we run into this person, we become this person, the next person that gets more offensive, 
the fool. Say it with me. The fool. Say pity the fool. All right? The fool. See, the difference, the difference between the simple and the fool is this. The fool knows better. They just don't give a rip. You say to them, don't you know that what you're doing is going to hurt you? And they go, yeah, I don't care. I don't give a fill in the blank. Some don't say rip. Some say other things. Usually fools say other things. And I won't get into that right now because we, we be in church right now. Okay, because I can't do that. All right. I saw a shirt at Walmart years ago. It said this. Sounds like a really bad idea. And underneath it, it said, what time? <laughs> That's the anthem of fool. Sounds like a really bad idea. We could get really hurt. What time you want to do it? Okay. See, you know what happened the last time you went there and you did that with them? And, you, and the fool says, I know, I don't care. This time's going to be different. And it's none your business. It doesn't matter what you think because I know what I want to do. Some of you think right now, I know you're thinking this right now, man, whatever, pa Pastor Dan, whatever. You know, I'm only listening today. I'm only paying attention today because some friend invited me and said that you were funny, <laughs> but you're not. I beg you to listen to me today. I'm pleading with you. You don't have to learn the hard way. You can learn from us. Those who are older and wiser, those who have made these mistakes, we run to the simple, we run to the fool, when we run away from wisdom. And let's go, look at this picture that Solomon paints. This is so gross. Just hang in there. Proverbs 26, verse 11 says this, As a dog returns to its vomit, come on, so a fool repeats his folly. Now, just so I can plant a thought in your mind that you'll never let go of, let me show you a picture of this. Let me show you a picture of this. Take a look at that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know you want to look away. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> it makes me want to gag too. That's why I'm glad I can't see it right now. Um, but here's the deal. Solomon says, when you return to your folly, when a fool keeps doing the same thing over and over, different, like a, expecting a different result, it's like a dog returning to its vomit. That's so gross, but it's so true. Can you picture that scene? And, and then uh, you always have that friend, the dog comes up and licks you all the time. And you're, I, I'm, for me, I just, I, I can't stand it because I see what dogs do and what they eat. That picture right there proves it to me. And that friend's always like, hey, hey, it's no big deal. I heard that a dog's mouth is cleaner than a human's mouth. And you're like, I've never seen a human being do what that dog just did. Matter of fact, I had a friend of mine whose dog was eating its own poop in the backyard one day. And he said to me, is a dog's mouth cleaner than a human's mouth? I'm like, no, I just saw your dog eat its own poop, all right? So I'm gonna tell you right now, that dog's mouth is not clean. I don't care how many dog bones you give it. Even if they're the little dental bones, it's not going to work. And you say, man, I've never ever seen a human being do that. And Solomon would say, yeah, you have. That's what a fool does when he keeps returning or she keeps returning to their folly. So here's the question. Do you have something in your life? And here's why I'm asking this question, because some of you right now are thinking, man, do I know some fools who need to listen to this message today? Before you go send this off to somebody else or get somebody else to watch this later on today, ask yourself the question, do you have something in your life that you keep doing and you know it's hurting you? Come on, man. Come on, let's be honest about it. If you've already had a DUI and you keep drinking and driving, if you have a habit that's slowly destroying you, if you continue to love things and use people, if you continue to spend money you don't have on things that you don't need, if you continue to spend all that you get without honoring God first with giving, what does that make us? If we keep going back into the same relationships and finding the same destruction and doing the same things over and over that we know are hurting ourselves, what does that make us? I don't need to answer it out loud. But Solomon says, that's a fool. I've acted the fool. I've lived in foolishness. We all have. You say, some of you say right now, oh, man, Dan, that's offensive. And you know what? I'm never coming back to church again. I'm never going to watch you guys online again. I'm never going to, I'm, I'm never tuning in again. And it's all your fault because this message just bugs me. And say, yeah, no, no, here's the deal. You're going to come back. And maybe it won't be pure heart, but you're going to come back to a church eventually. And let me tell you when you're going to come back. And this might be even more offensive, but I'm already out on a limb. I might as well just keep going until it snaps off today. All right. You're going to come back when you experience the cure for being a fool. Everybody does. And here's a cure. You ready? It's a universal cure for fooldom. Pain. That's right. See, because a fool has to learn things the hard way. When life kicks your butt, you're going to find your butt right back in church. 
You know how I know that? Because that's what happened to me. Mom and dad, you know what you're talking about. I got kicked out when I was 18 years of age. I'm doing what I want to do. Just chill, mom. Just chill, dad. I know what I'm doing. It's no big deal. And I wrecked my life. And life kicked my rear end. I said, I'm not going back to church. They're just going to tell me it make me feel bad, make me feel guilty. And I found my rear end back in church. You know why? Because that was the house of wisdom. When I got tired of living the life of the fool, when I got tired of the brokenness sexually and the brokenness with my addictions in life, I brought my life back to the house of wisdom, to God's house. And I said, Lord, I want to get back in between your lines. I want to live my life according to what you've called me to do. Listen to what a great mentor of mine, Dr. Henry Cloud, says about this in his great, famous book, Boundaries. This is what he says about dealing with people who are foolish. He says this, Sometimes consequences will get a turnaround, and other times they will just go away, as they do not like to be held accountable. It's just the truth. See, fools get easily defensive, easily offended. You confront them, you say, why are you, what are you doing? Don't stop, Duh, ah, and they just go, you don't, you don't own me. Who are you to tell me what to do? Fools get easily defensive and easily offended. And here's what you have to know. Anger is often a secondary emotion because a fool's not willing to deal with the real issue. So they throw up smoke screens. They act like it's all your fault. They act like it's a problem and, and you know, just don't understand. And they're just trying to follow their true self and just trying to have fun. And lastly, I'll say this. The fool says, it's my life. I'll do what I want to. Besides, I'm not hurting anybody but myself. Have you ever? I said that at age 18 years of age. I'm not hurting everybody but my, anybody but myself. And the truth is, I was dead wrong because I was breaking my mom's heart, breaking my dad's heart, breaking my own life, and breaking my friends' lives all around me because I was leading them down a path of destruction that I was on. Look at what Solomon says next in Proverbs 13, verse 20. He says this, Walk with the wise, and you become wise. Associate with fools, you'll get in trouble. Another translation says, you will suffer harm. See, the spouse of a fool, the child of a fool, the friend of a fool, the business partner of a fool, the employee that works for a fool, eventually you will get hurt. When they jack up their finances and their business, everybody in the business gets hurt. Young people, this is why your parents freak out about who you are friends with because you show me your inner circle, I'm gonna show you where you're gonna be in the next three years. I have an illustration I used to use all the time when I was in youth ministry. And I'd take a chair and I'd set it on the floor in front of the, my, the students in my youth ministry. And I would climb up on that chair. And I'd get at the top of that chair and I'd say, I'd, I'd pick the smallest kid in the group. I'd say, come on up here for a second. And so they'd stand there and I'd say, it is harder for me to pull you up to my level on this chair than it is for you to pull me, and it's easier for you to pull me down to that level than for me to pull you up. It is harder for me to pull you up. It is easier for you to pull me down off this chair than for me to pull you up onto the chair. That's what I'd say to them. And then we'd, we'd try it, and sure enough, it's true. And so here's the thing. You say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring them up to my level. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna read, I'm gonna bring them up to my level. Your inner circle should not be people that you're trying to bring up to the level that you want to live in in wisdom. Your inner circle should be people who want to live in wisdom like you want to live in wisdom. You show me your inner circle, I will show you where you're gonna be in the next three years. The companion of fools suffers harm. It, listen, if the people you're hanging out with don't care about their body, they're not gonna give a rip about your body. If they don't care about their future hopes and dreams and vision, if they don't care about theirs, they will never care about your vision and your hopes and your dreams for the future either. So run away. Run away from fools and run towards people of wisdom. Amen? Come on. Last one. This is going to be fun. The mocker. This is the toughest one of all. The mocker. Say it with me. The mocker. See, the mocker is the fool on steroids. Some translations use the word scoffer. Uh, not only does the mocker reject wisdom, they ridicule everybody who tries to follow wisdom. Um, if you work for a mocker, you never do it right. If you're married to a mocker, <laughs> if you're married to one, they're never satisfied. If you're the child of a mocker, you will never measure up. You're never 
good enough. They think they're the expert on every topic, and they're not. Watch what Solomon says. This is his take on the mocker, verse 24 of chapter 21 of Proverbs. He says this, Mockers are proud and haughty. They act with boundless arrogance. Another translation, this is so good, insolent fury. See, they control their world through their anger and their hysteria. They keep others away by being condescending. Grace has escaped them and everyone else in their life are absolute idiots. When you confront a mocker, they'll make you an enemy. It's all your fault. And here's the scary thing about a mocker. Listen to me closely. The mocker, this is what's so scary, is they don't know that they're mockers. They think everybody else is the idiot. As a matter of fact, there's some mockers listening right now, and you're thinking to yourself, boy, do I know some idiot mockers. That's the dangerous thing about being a mocker. Now watch what Solomon says. You're like, well, how do I know I'm a mocker or not? Here's the thing I do know. If you're concerned if you're a mocker or not, you're probably not a mocker because the mocker's not concerned about it. The mocker doesn't give a rip. The mocker just goes, boy, I know a bunch of That's so funny what he's saying right now because I know some idiot mockers. See, anyone who rebukes a mocker, Proverbs 9, 7 through 8, listen to what Solomon says. Anyone who rebukes a mocker will get an insult in return. Anyone who corrects the wicked will get hurt. So don't, this is so good. So don't bother correcting mockers. They will only hate you. But if you correct the wise, they will love you. Don't forget that. That's so important. All right? Dr. Henry Cloud, one more time. Listen to what he says in his book, Boundaries, on dealing with mockers. He says, while the simple needs input and the fool needs consequences, with the mocker, you have to go into protective mode. Watch how intense Solomon is on how to handle the mocker. Proverbs 22, verse 10. He says this, throw out the mocker and fighting goes too. Quarrels and insults, they disappear. See, don't allow a mocker to be in your inner circle. Don't allow a mockers to be in your heart crew. They'll destroy your heart crew. Don't allow mockers to lead teams in your business or in your ministry. Don't allow them. Deal with them, move them out. As a matter of fact, when you do, they're not gonna understand why you move them out. They're gonna make you an enemy and they're gonna go online and tell everybody how horrible you are. That's just what mockers do. But if you give into their anger, you give into their demands, you give into their control, if you do that and you keep them in places of leadership and influence, it'll just keep poisoning the team, the church, the family. They'll just keep poisoning it. So you have to to deal with them. But trying to confront them, just know this right now. You try to confront them based on facts and truth, it escapes them. They're not gonna believe you. Even if you bring others with you, you, do, you, you get a group of people together to confront. If they're in that place of a mocker, they're that bitter and that hard-hearted, they're not gonna listen to that group either. Only God, do you hear me? Only God can get the attention of a mocker. And so you have to step back and let God do what only God can do. You pray for them. You never stop loving them. You keep hope alive, but you gotta step back and let them face the full consequences of life or they will never change. But here, let me talk to you about this for a second. Uh, I've never talked about this before, but I wanna unpack something for you for just a moment. So if you've kinda checked out because you got mad about some of the things, lean in with me for just a second. What do you do when a mocker goes off on you? Social media, goes off into your face, on the phone, text, whatever it is. Emails, angry emails. A family member that starts telling other people how terrible you are. What do you do when you've been attacked by a mocker? I had a good friend of mine. Recently, we were uh, talking and hanging out together and he was telling me about something that his wife was going through and, and uh, she had been attacked by a family member. And so, in that conversation, the Lord just put this on my heart and I wanna share with you today what I shared with him. And when I just came out of my heart, I was like, God, that is so good. So check this out. When you've been attacked, here's the first thing that you need to do. Whenever I have somebody attack me, and it happens every once in a while, <laughs> here's what I do. First of all, I go to God. And I ask the Holy Spirit, I say, I say, Lord, is there any truth in this at all? Because he's the safest one for me to take this to. Is there, what this person's saying about me, the attack, the things that they're saying, is there some truth in it? Even if it's a small kernel of truth, and then, and then if there is, I, I want to deal with that, Lord. And then I go to a trusted friend. Not, not a friend who's gonna agree with me, oh, they're terrible, and I can't believe they talk to you that way, and that's horrible. I'm not gonna go to a friend who's just gonna agree with me and say, oh, poor little bunny, and tell me how sad things are. I go to a friend who I know who will love me enough to go, 
yeah, there, there might be some truth in that. And I ask them that because I want to know. I need to deal with that stuff in my heart. Here's the third thing I do. Once I've gone to God and I've gone to a friend and I've worked that out and okay, there's, not, there's nothing there, that's just pure attack, there's no truth in that, then I go to mercy and I realize how broken the mocker really is. I take the long walk around. You probably heard me talk about that before. The long walk of forgiveness and I go, God, I realize that they're broken. I don't know what happened in their life that made them this angry and this bitter and this, give them this lack of self-awareness, but God, I'd hate to be in their shoes. And, and, and so I go to mercy and I begin to pray for them. And I ask God to heal them and to strengthen them and to help me to love them. And then the fourth thing I do is I, I go to truth. Here's the truth. I am not going to let a broken person break my joy. I'm not gonna let them rob me of my joy. I'm not gonna let their attacks, I'm not gonna let the mocker's attacks rob me of joy. And I'm also not going to let a broken mocker define who I really am. As a leader, as a husband, as a father, as a child of God, as a friend, I'm not going to let a mocker define me. I'm just not, because they're broken. And I'm not gonna let a broken person tell me who I am. Does that make sense to you? Now be careful with that then you can slip into judgment and that can be a dangerous place. Don't let, them, don't let them define you anymore. Here's the last one. Go to grace. Grace for yourself. And here's why. Because after you do those four steps, you still may feel only 85% free. You still may hurt. And it's okay. You know why? Because you're human. You're not God. You're human. And it hurts. Hurting people hurt people. And it hurts. So take it to God. Take it to a trusted friend. Do that, take it to truth, take it to grace, take it to mercy, and then go, you know what, Lord? I'm gonna let you deal with them. Only you can heal them. Now, I hope that spoke to you. I hope it encouraged you, I really do. Now, I wanna, I wanna do something for just a moment because we've been kind of heavy there for a second, all right? I wanna talk to you for a minute about just a simple way, I thought about this this week, what's a simple way that I can explain the simple, right, the fool and the mocker? So. Go with me on this illustration for a second. I think the way we can do this is, let's look at the NFL, the National Football League, and let's look at some different teams based on simple, fool, mocker, and wise. Let's just do that for a second. So, we're gonna start with the simple. All right, let's roll with this for a second. Let's just start the simple fan. So that would be a Detroit Lions fan, okay? And the reason the Detroit Lions fans are simple is just simply this, okay? Because you've never won anything, like, Nothing, okay? You have no playoff experience. You just don't know what you don't know. I didn't know if the, the ownership knows how to build a team that can make it in, into the into the, to the Super Bowl at all, okay? So here's the other reason why. My son, Luke, my middle son, he's a Detroit Lions fan. And I already told him I was gonna say this, so we, I'm good here, okay? And I asked him, I said, son, why are you a Lions fan? And this is what my son told me. He goes, I think their uniforms are really cool. I'm not gonna say anymore. I'm just gonna stop right there. Okay, we're just gonna move on. Okay, so let's go to the fool. Let's go to the fools. And, and I know, don't send me emails, don't get mad, but we're just gonna be honest today about the fool. We're gonna go to the Arizona Cardinals, okay? Because you know, if you're a Cardinals fan, you get so excited. This could be the year. We got the quarterback, we got the draft picks. It's all gonna be great. We got a new coach, everything's gonna be wonderful. And it ends the same heartbreaking way every single year. So we're just gonna go simple Detroit Lions, we go foolish to be a Cardinals fan. Okay, we're rolling along, we're rolling along. Let's talk about the mocker for a moment. The mocker, the mocker is going to be the Raiders, okay? The Raiders, Howie Long and the Raiders back in the day. The Raiders, have you ever seen Raiders fans? Let me show you a picture of a Raiders fan. Take a look at this guy. He's probably an accountant, right? Or a podiatrist by day, but look at the way the man is dressed, okay? You don't confront that guy. He is a mocker, he will kill you, all right? So Raiders fans, mockers, everybody knows it. It's why they moved to Las Vegas. We'll just go on from that. And then finally, let's just be honest, let's go with wisdom for a second. You're gonna be a Rams fan. I know, I know I'm a Rams fan and you're gonna, oh, says you're a Ram. No, here's why you're a Rams fan. Rams fans are wise because you're gonna have some painful years. You really are, like basically the 1990s. You're gonna have painful years, but then every once in a while, you're gonna win a championship. You're gonna win a Super Bowl. That's how you're gonna be wise. And for those of you Cardinal fans out there and Detroit Lions fans who've never seen a Super Bowl jersey, this was the Rams Super Bowl jersey just a couple years ago. Just want you to see that. Okay, so no letters, take it easy, everything's fine. Just wanted to identify all that for you today. So let's sum it all up. Let's take a test. Forget the NFL for a second. 
let's take a test and see what jersey you're wearing, okay? If you're the simple, the foolish, the mocker, or the wise. So let's break this down for a second. Come back to me. Here we go. If you correct a simple person, they won't get you. It won't make sense. So you might be in that simple place these days if you just don't know what you don't know. And when an older, wiser person tries to tell you something or correct you, it doesn't make any sense to you. Like, that doesn't seem like it makes any sense. It doesn't seem cool. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem like it just seems old fashioned. You don't get it. Uh, you correct a foolish person and they'll dismiss you. Like, well, what do you know? And so maybe you've been dismissing some people in your life. Wow, well, what do you know? But you correct a mocker and they'll make you an enemy. So I'm pleading with you right now. If you've been making enemies of people, if you've got a list of people now in your life and they're all out to get you, maybe just take a moment this week and ask God, were they trying to love me enough to give me wisdom? And have I gotten to such a broken place and a hard-hearted place that I am making them the enemy now when they're just trying to love me? And then finally, you correct a wise person and they'll become grateful. So here's the question you have to ask yourself. If you want to walk in the house of the wise, if you, if you want to live between God's lines, here's what you do. You just say, the last time someone corrected you, encouraged you, challenged you, I'll use a tough Bible word, rebuked you, <laughs> were you grateful? Were you thankful they loved you enough to tell you the truth? You see, listen, that's where I want to live. Listen to what Dr. Henry Cloud says in his book, Boundaries, on dealing with wise people. He says this about wise people. When you find wise people, resource them. Give them more input, training, and whatever you have because they'll use it and they're worth investing in. Be a wise person. Be grateful for feedback. Be humble in your approach. Actually, I would encourage you to ask people for feedback. That's what a wise person does. A mocker just tells everybody what they think they need to know, everybody needs to know. So here's your action step for this week. Here's how we're gonna, what we're going to do this week. I want you to read Proverbs chapter 1. I want you to read it every day and just meditate on it. Let me, let me give you a couple of verses from this chapter. It's so rich. Proverbs 1 verse 20 says this. Wisdom shouts in the streets. She cries out in the public square. It's saying God's wisdom is accessible. It's clear for all who want to see it. Solomon goes on, verse 32, says this. For simpletons turn away from me to death. Wisdom is talking here. It says, simpletons, the simple, they turn away from wisdom. They run from wisdom to their own death. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. Did you notice something in that verse? It doesn't even mention the mocker. It's almost like Solomon said, we're not even going to talk about that because they're in such a broken place. Only God can get their attention. And some of you, I know what you're thinking. You're going... Man, this is kind of a bummer. It's kind of intense today, Dan. It's kind of uh, overwhelming, if you will. But the chapter isn't over. Look at verse 33. It says this, But all who listen to me, this is wisdom talking, but all who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear of harm. You see, when you walk between the lines, you live between the lines, that God has drawn for us in his word, we find peace. We find hope. We find strength, we find purpose, we find fulfillment. We live with wisdom and righteousness and devotion to God in a broken and evil world. That's what we do. Bow your heads with me for just a moment. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for this series. I thank you for what you've been doing in my own heart, the reminders that you've given me. I thank you for what you do in the lives of people. I've heard from so many people during this series. Thank you for the encouragement that you're bringing, the direction that you're giving us. Thank you, Lord. For those of you who are praying right now, just continue to ask God for wisdom to know what's right and the courage to live it out. And while you're praying that, I want to talk to some others today. Some of you today, for the first time in your life, you're ready to say yes to the wisdom and the leadership of Jesus Christ in your life. You want to come home to his love and his power today. You're done doing, trying to do life in your own strength. And today you want to say, Jesus, I want to follow you. So if that's you today for the first time, or today it's more of a rededication of your life to Christ. You've been doing your own thing, going your own way. Here you are today, not by chance and today you want to come home to the love of Jesus and his leadership, then if that's you today, would you pray this with me right now? Just say this, Lord Jesus, right now in this moment, I commit my life to follow you. I trust your wisdom and not mine anymore. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my rebellion. Forgive me of those moments when I've, 
I've played the mocker or the fool, or I've just been in a place where I didn't know what I didn't know. Forgive me, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you now fill me with your spirit, with your very presence, with your hope and your love and your joy and your peace. Fill me up, Lord, with your wisdom in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. I pray you have a strong week. Proverbs chapter one, read it every day this week. God bless you guys. We'll see you next weekend. So as we wrap up this series, we got the simple, got the fool, we got the mocker, and we got the wise. And I think there's times when I look at my life and I go, you know, in a lot of different areas, I feel like I'm making wise choices, I'm doing wise things. But I think each one of us needs to take a step back and go, instead of just going, yeah, I'm in the wise category, where are the areas in our life that maybe we've dropped into one of those other areas where we're not allowing ourselves to move forward or God wants us to grow out of some of those old habits that we might be stuck in. You know, I've seen Dan do this message a couple different times over the years that I've been here, and this is the newest variation on it. Uh, I think it's such a great message. Uh, what was kind of fun though is right before the service, he called me and he goes, hey, do you have any jerseys? I'm gonna use jerseys in, in years past. We've done three different seats. He goes, you have a jersey I could bring? I go, I actually, I'm not a big sports person. I actually only have really one jersey, and it's for the foosball club Bayern München. So this being what we would call as American soccer in Munich, Germany. Uh, and he goes, no, no, that's not helpful. Most people don't know what that is. So I go, no, actually, I found out this week that our second biggest audience for Pure Church Online is Deutschland. It's Germany. So uh, a guten tag and we get seen in to all of you out there in Germany. So glad you're joining us. Of course, also everybody else from around the world. But I thought that was kind of fun because I have family in Germany. So I go, wow, that's awesome. Germany's our second biggest audience. Didn't know. You know, at this time in our service, though, we always like to talk about what your generosity is making a difference. As you pour into Pure Heart Church, whether in the app or online, is what is your giving going towards? And one of the things that we started here is a GED program. This is a high school graduation equivalency, a GED is. And this program is relationally driven. This is where students are paired with coaches one-on-one -on -one to receive individualized guidance through the curriculum. And our heart goes beyond just the student receiving their GED, but also to develop a relationship with them where they can build confidence, feel encouraged, supported, experience the joy of learning in a faith-based environment. We currently have eight active GED coaches working with 10 students who are participating in our program, several who have successfully taken at least one subject test with passing scores, with a few more requiring a little more coaching, but we're seeing some great growth in them. And this is, some of them have huge boundaries in their life. You know, they're trying to take care of kids. They're trying to work a couple jobs. And in the midst of that, they're doing this GED program, which I find amazing. This is many, one of the many ways that you're giving is allowing lives to be transformed by the love of Jesus, getting people unstuck. And that's what I love. That's what God wants, right? You know, years and years and years ago, um, I actually had moved out to Phoenix in the middle of my senior year and my schooling was all kind of messed up. I'd been in some private schools, other schools, and uh, I ended up doing a GED program. And what I saw is that a lot of the kids in there, they came from very broken backgrounds. Some of them had dropped out of school in seventh, eighth, ninth grade. And for them, a GED, getting that was a huge struggle. It was a huge overtaking. And the temptation was for many of them to drop out. But I saw that the ones that finally did graduate, the joy on their faces, the accomplishment that that gave them, the, the self-identity it gave their lives was so big. And that's what we want to do through our program is go, hey, we know you might have been in a broken place here, but let's move you to a place of wholeness. So I just want to thank you, Pure Art Church, for continuing to give into the mission uh, and love people that have been in hurting broken places get unstuck. We love you all, and we'll see you next week.